James and John told Jesus, Grant that in your glory we may sit one on your right and the other at your left. They wanted Jesus to do their will. What they wanted. And they told him so. They told him, we want to sit next to you in your glory. Imagine, imagine telling Jesus, the Messiah, the teacher, what to do. See, James and John, in this case, they were climbing the ladder of success. They wanted prestige, honor, climbing over others. So imagine what the other ones that were there would have felt. Indignant, jealous. Why can't I do that? I should have thought of that. I thought of it, but I didn't do it. See, James and John were climbing this ladder. They wanted to be, they wanted the glory of being a follower of Jesus without the work, without the sacrifice. In other words, you could say their ego got in the way. They were climbers. And when we have spiritual and social climbers, they always upset other spiritual and social climbers. The drive to be first makes others feel last, and conflict erupts. We become angry when our self-will is compromised by the self-will of others. The grab for glory by two ignites the grab for glory in the others. In other words, feeding upon each other in a negative way. The spiritual and social climbers upset the other spiritual and social climbers. But as we know in following Jesus, there is another way. Within the competitive rankings, someone always is higher than someone else. The higher translates into oppression. Those on top push around those beneath them. Importance and power take on a sinister cast. The greater ones experience their superiority when they constrain others against their will. Their estimation of themselves rises to the extent that they can keep someone else lower. This, as we know, is the way of the larger world. But also we are reminded it is not the way of what Jesus asks of us. For Jesus asks of us to be in an other-centered way of life, not self-centered, but other-centered. And we do that, but to be mindful of it even more. Think about it. It's already happening. Think about those of you who are parents and have small children of how after even a long day of work, you still are attentive to the child when you come home, putting their needs ahead of your own. Think about in today's society also, an adult child caring for an aging parent, putting ego aside, not climbing, but being of service to the other, an other-centered way of life. And Jesus, <coughs> Jesus asks of us or even tells us what we should do about that. We says, and we heard in the second reading, so let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. 
There's no mention of power, prestige, but there is mercy and awareness of humility. And that's what Jesus asks of us, to turn to him for that grace, that turn to him towards that grace. For we know self-sacrificing in following Jesus is not easy. It does require us to, so to speak, take up our cross, whatever our cross might be. And self-sacrifice in following Jesus is not about an ego that says, I am better than everyone else. We recognize that in life, yes, we have people in charge of others, people in leadership, and then people who are in service to the leadership. But it's all, how does it work together? How does each one, how does the leader think of serving those that he employs? How does those that are being employed work to respect and serve those in authority? It's not about, well, it's going to be my way. This is the way to do it. It's putting aside that ego that focuses on the self. Putting aside, I am better than others. And we might even think about this when you hear the word ego, edging God out. Hmm. Edging God out. However, we can look at it in another way. Exalt God only. So which ego are you going to have? The edging God out or the exalting God only? We have to look at our life. How is it that we, how is it that we think of other and be other-centered? And certainly it goes on. It, can, it does occur in our life, but just to be more aware of it and what can we do to help that and what can we do to live that, whether it be at work, whether it be at home, whether it be at school. It is letting go of the ego. And when we do that, denying ourselves brings the joy of peaceful coexistence with others. See, it brings about when we let go of that and begin to focus on others, and others do the same, it works together. But we have to look at our lives. We have to look at our lives and see where is it that we are confidently approaching the throne of grace to help us, then to find grace for timely help. For timely help, it is the Lord who wants to help us. But we are to approach. And in order to be faithful to service, yes, we will have to take up our cross. But there, yes, there is a joy in being part of the call to follow Jesus. It's not the joy of the ego that wants to claim and proclaim its influence. No, to take up the cross and be other-centered, it is the joy of the soul that soars, cooperating with the invitation of the Spirit. To be other-centered, yes, sometimes means to take up our cross. To be other-centered is not to be a social or a spiritual climber. To be a follower of Jesus is to be aware, to be other-centered. And to be other-centered means that we have to approach, confidently approach Christ for the timely help to help us live out each and every day, putting the needs of others first. And when we do that, it is the joy of the soul that soars, cooperating with the invitation of the Spirit to follow Christ, to be other-centered, to take up our cross, 
That's what life is about. With the help of God's mercy. With the grace of the Lord. And as we do that, yes, there is a sense of joy in being other-centered as we listen to the invitation of the Spirit.